Domestic football is back after a break for international games and the Easter weekend sees Man United and Chelsea with a very busy schedule. This is Sports Spread and I'm joined by Nigel Seeley from Bet Butler and Reuters' own Ian Axon. Gents, as usual, thanks very much indeed for joining us. Uh, let's start with the football then. Uh, Ian, uh, Man United Sunderland to start with. A busy weekend for United and, and uh, Chelsea. So United need to win this to, to keep the gap, but Sunderland scrapping at the bottom. How do Man United manage this one? Well, I suppose... They, you know, as all football managers say, they just take it one game at a time. I, I imagine that United will have an eye on, on Monday, the, the uh, FA Cup replay against Chelsea. Uh, but Ferguson, he's got such a big squad there, hasn't he, at Old Trafford, that there's plenty of players on, on the fringe who can come in. Uh, Sunderland look relegation threatened. I know United's home form, well, it's, it's been good, hasn't it? But they have conceded a few goals at home and uh, look vulnerable at times. But I expect it to be a fairly routine win for them on, on Saturday and then they can turn their attentions to, to Chelsea in London. And Nigel, United... Presumably firm favourites for the, for the league game against Sunderland. I mean, they, they, they normally beat them, but Sunderland are in a bit of trouble, aren't they? They're in deep trouble. And the, the big factor for them now is Stephen Fletcher's ruled out for the rest of the season. So where are they going to score goals? He's the only one who scores goals for them. Ceci Young has been a, a very, very average player this year. The only thing, my only reservation is, is that I think Manchester United can canter now towards the title. They don't have to do anything. They don't have to go and win 2 or 3 nil. They don't have to put on a show. And for that reason, I, I think Sunderland might be up for this year. Manchester United went there last season, last of the season. They thought they won the title there. Then obviously what happened at the Etihad. I, I just got the feeling the draw may make a little bit of appeal. I, I never like backing odds on teams away from home in the Premier League. I think it's a very poor betting strategy. On this occasion, I can see not many goals. I mean, Manchester United, I think we, they're going to have a virtual reserve side out, but it's good yeah. enough to beat Sunderland on any given day. I think instead of looking for some value on the match, I think the best way to play this would be under two and a half goals market, go for, go for low score, and I think Manchester United might win it 1-0, or I could even see it being a 0-0 draw. I just don't think there's going to be many goals in this game, mm. and I don't care what people say, these players on international break, coming back, they're tired from that, the reserve side, and I think they've all got their one eye really on, on, on Chelsea because the, the title is over. I mean, okay. they, could, they could draw every game now and still win the, the title. Oh, well, let's t turn our attention to, to Chelsea then, Ian. Uh, they're travelling to Southampton. Again, similar position, isn't it? The Southampton scrapping away and improving of, of late. And also you've got the, the so-called interim manager Benitez. He could do with a, with a win there and then move on to, on, on to Monday. It's more difficult for him. Well, the Chelsea uh, kind of soap opera moves on, doesn't it, from, from week to week. You never quite know what's going to happen. Uh, Southampton had a, a great win, didn't they, against Liverpool uh, the other week. And Chelsea's form, well, you know, one week they're, they're doing fantastic. It's away, which is probably good for Chelsea, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. They, they seem to, you know, one week they play brilliantly, the next week they're, they're awful. Um, I don't know, it may be a, a bit trickier for, for them um, at Southampton. Obviously, Southampton fought back, didn't they, at the bridge as well earlier this season and, and, and got that draw. Um, possibly a battling draw for, uh, for Southampton. Okay. On the weekend. How do you see this one going, Nigel, in terms of the betting at it's least? It's very much, it, all the Premier League games this week, it's a lot of top v bottom. And you know, I always like to take the favourites at home again. I think it's a tricky place to go. Southampton have already beaten Manchester City. They've beaten Liverpool last time out. They raised their game against the big teams. They were very unlucky against Manchester United as well. Chelsea went there in the cup, didn't they, and got beat 5 0. And Chelsea went there and won 5 0. They had to give them a hammering. I can't see any repeat of that. Um, I, I look at this game and I think again it comes down to team news. How important is Chelsea's FA Cup game on, on Monday? I think he'll rest players. I think Torres may feature. I don't know it's a good thing or a bad thing. I will never agree. <laughs> what, what, what kind of how you gauge that market? But I, I look at this game. One thing I, I did look at the stats of Chelsea. Chelsea score more goals than any of the teams in the top four in the first half, and they concede more goals in the second half. So basically, what I'm saying in this game is that Chelsea might get off to a flying start like they did at the Bridge, go two 0 up, one 0 up. But I think Southampton will score here and maybe peg them back. So. I, I think I'm heading towards the draw as well. I think the draw may be a little bit of value. But in running, if Chelsea go 1-0 up, then you probably want to don't rule out Southampton to come back here because they can see more goals than any team in the top half of the table in the second half of football matches. OK, quick rundown on some of the other matches at the weekend, the Premier League matches. Any, where's the money at the moment? I mean, well, you've got QPR against Fulham. That'll be an interesting one. Well, that's very interesting. I mean, that's, everybody, the Fulham fans have really want to put QPR down. They said that this, but I think QPR are down anyway, regardless of what happens there. I think there's a couple of interesting... I think Tottenham going to Swansea. I think that's a difficult one to really call. Tottenham on the back of two defeats. Swansea, I think, are a team to oppose at all costs for the remainder of the season. They've won their champ, they won their they've cup. Done, they've done they, the they, they're going to finish mid-table. They've got one eye on the beaches of Dubai, or wherever yeah. these players go nowadays. But I look at uh, Everton, Stoke. I think I think Stoke at a big price could really get drawn into this relegation battle. They don't score goals. Yeah. The manager's under pressure. They've suddenly turned around and said we don't like your style of play. And I think Everton it will be many people's bangers. But I think Everton will win to nil. I think they'll convincingly win that game to nil, maybe two, maybe three nil. OK, let's move on to uh, the Monday then. Uh, 12.30 start, Man United uh, and, and Chelsea. As close as the first one. I mean, 
first half to Man United, second half to Chelsea. Is it going to be that tight again? I remember watching it here in the offices, and uh, after the first 10 minutes, it looked like you know, United, were, United were going to cruise through, and then Chelsea fought back. Uh, I think Benitez made a couple of good substitutions. Uh, maybe showed his worth as a maybe a bit underrated by the, the the Chelsea supporters as a as a manager showed his worth there. Um, I actually fancy them on Monday at Stamford Bridge. I think they're going to be fired up for it. Um, they have got that Europa League fixture, haven't they, on Thursday? So they may have have one eye on that. But I, I fancy them to to maybe nick a result, um, just simply because their 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 form is so unpredictable. So one one week they're, they're they're awful, and the next week they're great, and maybe this week they'll be great. Okay. Um, how do you see that one going, Nigel? Well, I think I agree. I think Chelsea will get something, but I think they might get something after a long afternoon. I think it possibly could be a be a very tight game. I think it could go to extra time and penalties. I really do. I mean, there's a lot of draws in the head to heads between these two times in recent. A little bit of history there too. Also, goals, <laughs> Nigel. The amount of goals in these games. You when you associate Manchester United and, and Chelsea, you expect them to be tight, nil nil, one nils. I think they averaged six goals in their last five games they played. And over the last ten games, there's over four point one goals per game. So, and I think you definitely want to be going over goals. I think it'll be. And I think it'd be quite entertaining. I like the look of a another two two draw at big big price, or maybe even a three three. We've had a, a couple of three threes between these two before. So, but I think if you're going to back Chelsea, I think you're much better off to back them to qualify rather than back them to win. Because if they qualify, it brings in a penalty shootout. It brings in it brings in extra time. If you just back them to win the match and it goes, they qualify through that that method. You deemed a loser because. In 90 minutes will be settled as a draw. So if you do, I think if you want to back Chelsea, I'd much rather take the shorter price on Chelsea to qualify. Okay. Final on the football. Who wins the FA Cup? We've got Millwall, Wigan, and then Man United or Chelsea against Man City. Who, where does it go? Um, Man City for me. I think that would be the, the smart money. I, th- I think Man City as well. I really do. I mean, I, I, anything I, left? I, I think it'd be the most one-sided FA Cup final. For, for years and years and years so I think Man City will probably have too much strength OK that, that's the football then uh, our final uh, sporting event uh, the Sunday's boat race uh, after last year's fiasco with the man in the, uh, the protest uh, Oxford heavier but does that have any effect on what's going on Oxford 76 Cambridge 81 as we stand and I know where I stand on this <laughs> <laughs> you're an Oxford man I, I, I don't know it's interesting isn't it the, the, the toss can you know, prove critical which side of the river you get uh, the weather conditions on the day uh, whether a guy like Trenton Oldfield uh, decides to, to take a dip in the Thames. I hear he's, he's rambling in the Cotswolds. This Under weekend, supervision. <laughs> so he, he won't be, he stays there. Uh, he won't be, uh, be anywhere near it. Um, well, it's a two-horse race, isn't it? So, <laughs> so you don't know which side to bet on. I know it's your favourite. It's you, my favourite, as you can tell from my yeah. from my action. I, I, I'm very much into this, but I, I I think it's one of these things. I think it's um, it's a it's a sport. It's something that is tradition in this country. But the betting on it has turnovers dropped every single year on year on year on year. So it's old-fashioned. It's people betting with their heart rather than their yeah, head. written in the heart with the head. I think bookies. It's it's something that was to take pride of place, but. I, I think it's a bit of a disgrace that that's on television. We can't get a Premier League game on terrestrial TV, but that's my opinion. But anyway, it's, it will be interesting. Cambridge are the defending job. Bookmakers not offering each way on this one. So that's what, But I, I wouldn't have a clue where to put the money. Though, so from two fantastic fans of, uh, <laughs> of rowing, non-Olympic rowing, uh, we probably better leave it there. Thank you very much. Uh, thanks to Nigel Seeley from Bet Butler and Reuters' own Ian Axon. That's all from us for now. I'm Nigel Stevenson. This is Reuters.